Okay, so the 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 observer. Okay, so I think uh, so. I was asked a question about um, I think what to do if there's distractions when you're in the observing field, something along those lines. Um, well, first of all, let, let's do a little introduction to the to the observer. So. The observer is like a, like a tool. Uh, really, you, uh, the t the, I call the, the observer or self inquiry is like a tool if you're feeling any experience of separation. So, if there's an experience of separation, then you want to utilize the observer. Uh, um, I'm going to say the obvious, but you might as well say it. You don't, one doesn't need to do the observer if there's no se sense of separation because only the thing that would be in separation would want to go to the observer. Once there's no separation, then th that would be like a ludicrous thing. That shouldn't really occur. Other way, if it did occur, it'd be because there's a sneaky ego still in separation thinking it needs to do it. So, so yes? Are yeah, like yeah. you saying that if you're, um, when there's no separation, then there's just, that, that's just where you are. But you're saying that you, um, when there is something going on, that's when you go to the observer. Um, yes, that's right. That's what but, I'm saying. No, I yes. think what I mean is that, but would you not, when there's no separation, is that not being in the observer? Because well, it's just... Well, okay, that's a great that's question. That's just what is. Well, yes. So, uh, what is, uh, what is, you could say, uh, you could label that as the observer. Mm -hmm. So, if one is in the what is, or the isness, or, or the beingness, then uh, there's no separation. There's the, uh, the experience of, uh, you could say, uh, oneness or limitlessness or timelessness. Uh, so there is the uh, eternal presence. So without any, any sense of, of limit. Uh, so when there's an experience of limit or there's an experience of contraction or there's an experience of an individual or uh, an individual relating to something else, when all of those things start to be experienced, then that's the, the ego self exists. Yeah, so the ego self exists. So, uh, yes, so uh, w what I was referring to is like, often the observer, I sort of frame it like a tool. Like if I experience myself, I'm this body. I experience myself as being this body. Well, a body, the experiencing of a body is experiencing limitation. Yeah. So then, one uh, you could say you could use it as a tool because I'm experiencing the body. It's like, well, you know. So if I experience myself as being limited to this area here, then then there is that which is observing this limited area. And when I'm in the position, when I am that which is observing the limits, you know, that experiencing will bust the limit of experiencing limited to just the body to a more limitless expansion. If that more limitless expansion still has in any way any experiencing of limitation or contraction, then, then something must be observing that. So then, you know, one then re recognizes how is st one still experiencing limitation or contraction. And then, you know, then the, uh, the sense of what, the positionality of what's observing and as you do that, then every single experiencing of limitation contraction dissolves. Because that which is the truth, um, it's only when that what you could say there's identification, or even unconscious identification, one is unaware uh, that there is unconscious identification, then there is the experiencing of an individuality that is referencing the rest. So there is like, the, you know, there can be like a me who's thinking, there can be a me who is a body, there can be a me that's experiencing time, there can be a, a me that's experiencing this location. But, you know, that which observes location is not in location. That which observes time is not in time. That which observes the body is not a body. So as we, that which observes even limitless, a, a very expansiveness, there's something that that observes expansiveness, which is beyond expansiveness, you see. So as you keep going through this, then you, you come to, as you said, the isness. The isness, which is the experiencing 
uh, of um, you could say it's oneness or isness or presence, mm. but that presence has got no um, no colouring of contraction or, or limit or uh, or individuality. You know, often when you say me, it usually denotes that there's some kind of ego there, some kind of separation. Mm. So as soon as and and uh, so. As soon as there is the experiencing of suffering, like so, you know, someone was asking about what if suddenly there's something ang anxious coming up? Well, as soon as, if some anxiety comes up, then usually th that would mean then that the individual has appeared. You know, it's like, oh, you know, like let's say, um, oh, you know, the, the structure of the house may not be good, I'll have to get repairs. Mm -hmm. Now, the isness is not b bothered about, you know, the future and, uh, getting repairs for the house. So that means the ego has come into being and is going into fear or worry about a future because that doesn't exist in the isness. So then you go, well, how am I, you know, the, you know, these become like intuitive questions rather than a personal question. Intuitively, like, well, I would be like, okay, so there was the isness or the beingness or the presence or the limitlessness and then suddenly there is fear and, a th and thinking going on. So that's the fear and thinking means suffering, you know. And also, when, when thinking happens, what I mean is there's identified thinking, so it becomes personal, you know. Anything that's witnessed is not personal. There, there is no individual that has it, that has experienced. So, so then, you know, it's quickly then to see, like, um, the you know, a nice question, if you can frame it, is what, what am I? So then it would be, oh, from being in pure presence, one is now feeling some sense of I'm thinkingness and fear together. It's a mix of thinkingness and fear. So how do I experience? Then you, you just take a moment to experience because fear and the thinking are like I call them like a package of limits. You just have to be identified. It's like remember at the end of the day when you experience yourself as an object. This is often happens unconsciously in a split second. But to do the self-inquiry, you have to recognize how are you an object now, yes? How have I, from being just in oneness mm -hmm. or being in the beingness, if there's any suffering, then suddenly one has condensed into an object. So the first step is, what kind of object am I? You know, so the fear. Okay, so sometimes it might be there's fear in the might be that suddenly there is a sensation of local localization of fear maybe in this area. And then, so, you know, like when I go into the ego, it might be like thinkingness going on here and fear here. That's great. So now you know how you experience yourself as an object. So the next thing then, after you do inquiry a lot, is then something, you know, like if you keep doing that, that you're not the pen, then eventually you realize there's an observer of any object. There must be an observer. So if I become suddenly an object, there is that which is observing the fear and the thinking. And that which is observing the fear and the thinking, which are objects, is not an object, you see. And so as you go into that, yeah, go. But how do you get to that when you're in it, when you're in it and you don't know you're in it? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Because usually you're in, you're in the isness, and then suddenly a thought arises, and then there's fear and there's thinking. So you're asking, like, so say the question again. When you're in the f fear and the thinking and you're not aware and observe of an observer of it because you're just yeah. full of that and that is now yes. what you are and yeah. you've forgotten. Oh, yeah. you've then forgot how do you get back there? Mm -hmm. Are you saying how do you remember to do it or how do you do it when you're in it? Both. Oh, okay, okay, both. So, um, how you remember, how you, you know, like often you can be in the isness and then you can go into becoming a observe, a, an object. So from business to object, and this can become so natural that you just suddenly just stay as an object for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, and you forget that you were in the business before. So that thing is, um, there's a few things I could say on that. One is, um, uh, I would um, have the, uh, have, have the, um, the spiritual intention to become f more and more free every day. Or for me, I call it like a commitment to, to praying to God for freedom from the bondage of my ego, you see, as, as, as a non-verbal intention. 
so when this becomes, you know, I wrote a, I wrote a chapter in my book, you know, a bulletproof piece on what's your unconscious values hierarchy. So whatever is the most important thing for you will usually become a high priority. So if that's a high priority, then you'll do, you'll get things like I have this Casio watch, uh, which uh, which I use just to remind me throughout the day to regularly see if I'm in the observer or not, and, or do my course in miracles lesson or not. So that then, as you keep doing that, or if you keep watch Muji videos, or you can watch my videos on the observer tool, as you keep doing that, then what will happen is, you know. Like to be in the ego all the time is like a very bad addiction. It's a very bad habit. That's like everyone is wired just to be in thinking all the time mm -hmm. and be the mm -hmm. thinking. So, so it's going to be very, very easy to revert back to just, you know, even if you do a bit of meditation or do the observer to be in a wonderful place. But as soon as you leave the house to be back in the ego, because it's a hardwired addiction. So there has to be like a commitment to. Um, of, of gr probably greater, greater uh, spiritual intensity to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you're hardwired all your life to just be in your thinking, then if you just do like 10, 10 minutes of the observer in the morning and, and hope that will last for the month, it's probably not going to last for the month. So it's like, a, it's going to be like, you, you, uh, like a regular practice throughout the day, I think, is the best thing. Because even a morning thing, you know, I think it should be like check-ins throughout the day, really. And then what does this regular practice look like? Well, you know, I would suggest, because I, <coughs> I did the Course of Miracles, and doing the Course of Miracles, I saw the spiritual genius in the Course of Miracles, which it says, start off twice a day, and then it says, like, do hourly, and then it says, like, do every ten minutes. And I saw, of course, they were trying to break down the ego resistance. Because on day one, you're not likely to be able to do, like, every ten minutes. So it's going to start twice a day, then gradually build it down. And my experience of, of gradually reducing the times on my watch was that once you, once it, it acts like what I call like a, a shield against negativity. You know, like if you just meditate twice a day every day, you'll feel a lot better than when you never used to do it. But then... When you start, later when you're able to do that, when you start like meditating three times a day, then, you, and you do that for a while, you feel even better. And you can cope with three after you've been doing two. And then after a while, like with the watch, I had hourly, and then when I went to half an hour, there was a lot of ego resistance. Like, this is like, I don't want to do this. Cause, and then after about, I don't know, I think a couple of weeks or so, two or three, four weeks, the resistance melts and then you really enjoy it. And, and then, what is it that you do on an hour and a half hour? Well, I do, uh, I would do, I try to remember my Course in Miracles lesson for the day, and then uh, do, do the Observer, which really for me be, happens so quickly, which is just really to go in silence, and to let go of all identification with, with anything that I'm currently identified with. Mm -hmm. But really it's the Observer, I do the Observer. Because it becomes, it becomes like a natural thing where you don't have to do the observer, it happens automatically just by the process. You know, bec everything becomes intuitive later on. You don't have to, yeah? Oh, as long as you don't mind being on. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I just want to share um, lately I've been doing that. Uh, well, the first thing is what you were saying about the limitations. Uh, and so I want to keep it a little bit more practical. Like, um, in, and it, it, don't get me wrong, in one hour and a half meditation, this might happen for uh, half a minute. But once I get to that place where I do the observer and I can see and I start witness all that bold thinking, addictive thinking, yeah. you know, because that's what my ego is, it's like that huge addiction of going to the future, going to the future or regretting the past. But but normally just going to the future and I'm going to do this and I'm going to be the house and I'm going to be the yacht and I'm going to be the next girlfriend and I'm going to be, as you were saying, I, 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 my ego totally uh, tricks me into thinking that I am that object, I am that thing. Uh, so when I get to that, I actually start even, start uh, 
the limitations of the body start to kind of uh, uh, dissolve, I don't know how to say, so I stop, mm, uh, I can't really uh, feel my hands anymore, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I start, so I, I can, I can do that, I've been experiencing the little tip here. Uh, of, of that, uh, like I said, one and a half, I might experience it for a few seconds. And then the other thing is, when I increase my meditation, mm -hmm. I would wake up in the middle of the night with such an ego kick that, uh, mm -hmm. and exactly like that, just, I am this, I am the future, uh, thoughts, just thoughts, 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 fear, fear, fear. And I think that's what, it has been happening to me. So uh, how do I know that I'm in the ego again? Is there's a lot of suffering coming. Uh, physically, I start to get really anxious, and my heart beats as hell. And uh, and and that's what basically uh, has happened for me. I start to ca catch myself mm. more over, and I cancel those beliefs. And I'm going like, oh, here we go again. And so that's that's what it's yeah, yeah, yeah. You can also uh, cancel your beliefs as well, and the more you do it, the easier it gets. You know, you become. You could say you're developing like a spiritual field, which wants to be free of limitation. It's not coming. I, I don't say it's a program because it's not coming from the ego. It's like a spiritual intention to not to release all limitation. You know, to be in the isness is not not to experience limitation, which is to, total freedom. And you know, like if you're in the, and also if you're in the isness, so that's the thing. You like the commitment to regularly practice, otherwise you'll 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 go back to becoming an object, and you'll stay the object for the rest of the day. And remember, just before you go to sleep, oh, I forgot to do it. So because it's your why? Because I'm a hypnotist. You, you become hypnotized. You know, to, when you're in your thinking, you're in a state of hypnosis. It's 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 more addictive than watching a film. Mm. It's more you know like. Mm. We say, as, as a hypnotist, I'd say, like, if you, if you go and see a movie, you go into hypnosis, you go into the movie, you see. But really, the, addi the addiction to the movie of your own story is more addictive than a movie. It's like there's an entrancement. It's the greatest show, me, is the greatest story on the planet, you see. Like, mm. my dramas in the future, what I want to create, all, all that meanness. So it's so addictive. So to release that addiction... Um, so, so that's why you need that regular structure, the commitment to a regular structure, otherwise once you go in you're hypnotized, so you don't remember. You can't, it doesn't want you to remember, it wants to stay in hypnosis for good. That's the life of the ego. So once, so, but if you're in it and you remember, if you say suddenly, oh yeah, there's problems with the house I have to fix, and you start going to thinking, it's the same thing, you know, it's, it's like, now, okay, I can give you some extra things. Like, if you go into it for too long, you become really, it becomes really difficult to come out. Mm -hmm. Because you've like, you know, you become like very stuck in your thinking and very, and maybe the emotions become very large. You might have lo lots of fear and palpitations and, and like really like glued into your thoughts. So, you just keep doing it. So you'll say like, okay, I feel a lot of fear in the body and I feel a lot of mental activity going on. Uh, you know, so what's observing this? And then you'll get a sense of what I, what you get is a interested observer. You get an interested observer which gives you some detachment but not complete detachment from your thoughts and, and your feelings. So you do that and it, it won't, usually you won't be able to go to the pure observer directly. You'll go to what I call an interested observer. So it'll just feel this, a little bit of detachment but um, there's still a lot of identification with the thoughts and the feelings. And then you have to take it to the next, so you have to keep the practice going until you're in the pure observer. So you say, okay, there is an observer watching my thoughts. I experienced being the observer watching the thoughts and the body, but it seems to have a connection. The observer seems to have some kind of connection with the thoughts and the body. But the, still you've got some detachment. Then you have to ask, well, what's observing the interested observer? So if the observer has got some, atta some attachment or, or, or interest in the thoughts of the body, then I'll ask, okay, well, what's observing this, this observer, which has some kind of interest? And that observer will either be a more uh, limitless observer, or it will be the pure observer. But you have to keep taking it back. So here's the thing, like, when, you're, when you become more and more identified, you become more and more the object, and it becomes bigger and bigger and more identified object. 
But now you're doing the process of disidentifying and things are going to like unlayer a bit by bit. So if you really get stuck in, you won't go to the pure observe in one go. You go to a slightly detached, then a more expansive observer, and then eventually, oh yeah, you know, you've forgotten about it because you're in the pure observer. So you just don't have, it, for me, it, it almost experientially feels like when you identify with the body, when you identify with body and thoughts, you become more and more contracted. And as you go to the, and as you're in a contracted state, as you start doing the observer, you start to un you start to unpeel, and then and then you're releasing these little identifications with thoughts and, and bits of the body or areas of the body, and then you're starting to expand out as you're chunking out the little attachments and the little identifications with various aspects, because you've identified with all these objects, you see, and then eventually you're not identified with anything, and then you're in there. So there'll be no. Usually you're in a state of just pure presence uh, then. And there, there is, you know, once you're not identified with thoughts, then you can't remember what the problem was. And the great thing to know is it's actually um, when you're in the states, you know, as everyone who knows, when you're in those states, everything takes care of itself. All the bills get taken care of in miraculous fashion. Uh, and once you're in those states, it's not a problem you see, because the states are like an infinite state of, of harmony and security. And those states actually take care of everything, or um, uh, they effortlessly get taken care of. Does that answer the question? Is there any, anything else on, on that? Uh, I, occasionally I have something where I can almost feel like so kind of unbounded, can almost feel like not madness, but like, uh, like, um, like so, so far removed from the ego that it can almost feel, I don't know how to describe it, um, I can be scared of, like, being so boundless, it can almost feel like frightening because it's so expansive. Yes, so okay. what would be frightened? Mm -hmm. What What is the thing that is frightened? I guess that's still the ego. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, so the ego, yes, go on. Because the ego doesn't know this place, this place that is so limitless. Yes. And wants to control. Yeah, so the ego can't, can't handle that. And so it can get freaked out. Or, yes, yeah. that's right. So, you know, um, each level of surrender requires a certain level of ego death. Where even if you're the beginner, you know, even if you're a beginner and someone says to you, like, uh, uh, you're worried about money, just let it go, hand it over. Even that would require, it would be fearful. And even when you get to these higher levels, where you're just wanting to be in the isness non-stop, then uh, what? But what gets scared is always the ego. I mean, is in is is infinity scared? Infinity is not scared. No, but so, I can be scared of infinity. That yes, be. the ego I can be scared of infinity. Mm -hmm. And you know, here's the thing: um, no one has to let go of anything, but. Um, uh, but that is the gateway to each new level of expansiveness. Mm -hmm. There's always a fear with each new level of expansiveness. Like, I'll become a vegetable. Mm -hmm. I'll become boring. People won't like me. I won't be able to pay my bills. Um, you know, uh, people... I'll, or I'll become a hermit and find a cave and never, never come out. So various things come up, which are quite common, actually, you know. We had someone uh, the other week say, so I'll become boring if I keep doing this. So you need to be, like, the, you, the ego thinks you need the ego to be more entertaining. And then you won't be, I don't know, what the ego thinks. So these things come. But later on, uh, those things come up. Also, that's another one comes up. Like, I, I won't be able to go back to my normal me. You know, like, I'll be stuck. I'll be stuck in infinite bliss for forever, you know. I won't be able to, like, so all of these things, uh, yeah, sort of, is dreadful, isn't it? Like in a state of enlightenment and bliss forevermore. Mm -hmm. So you might get stuck there and not come back into a contracted state. So all these things come up. 
Eventually, though, when you keep doing it, you, if you keep doing that, eventually, um, uh, what uh, Dr. Hawkins said, it comes up the last gateway, which is an extreme terror of the death of the ego. So if you, you only have to do that once, ever, then you become enlightened, you see, in the death. So, um, so if you want to be, you know, when the extreme terror, like if you go through this, the ego will say it and you'll know it. If you go through this final thing, I will not exist after you go through this. It's very difficult to go through that. There's not that many enlightened teachers out there. Most people chicken out. Like 99.999% of people who are extremely devoted, spiritual devotees, when they get to that place, they chicken out. And those are really dedicated people. So it's not a thing that can happen by accident. Well, it could potentially, Ramana, but that's an extreme, <laughs> extreme thing. Yeah, are you going to say something? Well, I was going to say, I'm not saying that I'm a devoted spiritual, advanced, etc. Yeah. all those things, but I, I do feel like I've had glimpses of that terror, that's, or, or of a terror, not necessarily that. Yeah. But that, I, I definitely feel like I've had kind of glimpses of that where it's just everything beyond, and, and that's when I, yeah. It's, it's a great question. So how do that? You know, like I, I've often shared, and I think this is a useful thing, like when I went from surrendering my food addiction in the early days, when I was going to give up uh, binging, um, and that you know my, my ego really was addicted to b binging on food, and when I gave that up, literally um, I had panic attacks, like I was going to die, you know, and uh, you know, um, and you know the very first time I had the panic attack, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I felt like I couldn't breathe, and uh, and then something said like go and eat. It doesn't make sense, but I was a compulsive overeater. It should be I should call the hospital, I can't breathe. It was like, go and eat. Mm -hmm. So I ate, and what happened when I ate the food, binged out on the food, was I could breathe again. Mm -hmm. So that, which is quite, quite hilarious, because you, you think you're dying and you can't breathe, but you eat a huge quantity of food and you can breathe again. But I was like, I was committed the next time it happens, I would be willing to die, but I would not pick up the food. So I was willing to actually physically die. And I went through the panic attack, it lasted 15 to 20 minutes, so literally like, feeling like there's no air in the room. And, um, and then it passed. And that was, you know, more or less, the, that was more or less the start of 10 years of freedom from compulsive overeating. When I went through that death, it felt like you're going to die unless you do the thing the ego wants you to do. That's basically what he's saying. If you don't let me be in control, you will die. And, uh, and that's what it felt like. And I went through that, and my life was like 10 years freedom now. So these are the things, these are like the gateways, and when you're close, but the thing to do, like if you're doing, doing your observer and then suddenly you feel like you'd be out of control for the rest of your life, you need to like, you know, lose your identity or something like that comes up, you just observe what's observing that, yeah? Even if you're going to die, what's observing your death? Because that which observes the dying is not the dying, if that makes sense. Because dying is an object. Dying is an object which is being observed. So let the thing that thinks it's dying die while it's being observed. Yeah? So, or if there is like a feeling that, um, oh, you know, I better go back into my ego. I think I'll never be able to get back in again or I'll go insane or something happens. Just go to that which is observing this. Yeah? And let this thing, what will happen is there'll be chaos for a while. And just be, keep going back to that which is observing. Until, and then it will dissolve. And usually when it dissolves, you'll be on a much higher solidity mm -hmm. of, of expansiveness. Because that thing that wants you to keep you to this lower level of contraction has now been busted out. Mm -hmm. And you'll be at a more natural state of beingness and flow in your life. And it will take over. That's been my experience through every little ego death that has happened. Here's the thing, like if anyone gets the big fear, you know, like when there's an experience of dying, it is observed. You know, the feeling of dying is observed. You cannot die. And this is the, I think that's such an amazing thing to say, because the only thing that can die is limited. Yes? Like the infinite observer can never ever die. So when the thing comes up that's dying, just observe it and let it die. You know, the observer is not going to die. I mean, the observer watches everything which is transitory. So the whole world of transitory and limitation and the seeming birth and death, all, all of these are transitory phenomena that happens within the observer. Yeah? So nothing, 
the observer never ever dies. All things may seem to die in it. Even if the body dies. Even if the body dies, it's observed. Mm. So the observer can never ever die. 